Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmed Burhan Mohammed, and I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, coming from the Merkaz Abu Bakr al Siddiq Islamic Center. The journey of memorizing the Quran is very, very, very long and hard and rigorous. Uh, the Quran is a mu'jiz, it's a miracle, anyone can learn it. You guys have time until uh, the day you enter your grave, you have uh, the time to learn the Quran, so try as hard to learn the Quran. The first step in memorizing the Quran. My first advice is you have to have a goal. You have to have a certain goal you want to reach. If you want to memorize the Quran, you have to really want it. You can't be 50-50. You can't have doubts. You have to really want it. You have to know you have to put all your time and effort into it. You have to go fully in, all in, with all your dedication, all your work. The second thing is you need time management. Time management is uh, the biggest thing. You have to put a lot of time into the perfection of the Quran. Like you guys have breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, you have to have a designated time for the Quran. And most of the ulama have agree, agreed upon on the best time being after Fajr. After Fajr, your body and your mind is recharged. You just woke up from sleep. So you're ready to learn the Quran and memorize the Quran. Uh, and also you have to be consistent when you're learning the Quran. It can't be a thing where you do every other day or every other week. It has to be every single day. You have to learn the Quran every single day. You can't miss a day. If you miss a day, you mess up the schedule and you're not going to be able to reach your goal. So inshallah, with mastery, they say mastery comes with time. And if you're trying to become successful in anything, you have to put a lot of time into it. The second thing for the students is you have to have good parents. Everything starts from the household. You have to have parents that push you forward. They are always there. They are pushing you forward. That take you to a good duxi, to a good ma'alin. That they don't care about how tired you become. They're always pushing you forward. They're very strict. They don't let you have a lot of free time. You know, later off it pays off, inshallah. So success comes from your upbringing. The third thing, and then one of the biggest things, is your teacher. You have to have a very good teacher. Like my teacher, I could say the best teacher in the world, Sheikh Abd Nasir Farah. He was a very professional teacher. And I had a very professional teacher who taught me the Quran. And you can't be having, a, uh, you can't have a knockoff teacher that's only only there for the payroll. You have to have a teacher that's dedicated and wants to teach you the Quran. You have to have a very strict uh, teacher whose balance is not very strict or is not very uh, uh, nice. You have to have a very balanced teacher who's very strict. You have to have a teacher that's always giving you advice. Like me, when I uh, lead salah or I read somewhere, everyone comes up to me. Oh, mashallah, Allah, you took off, man. Today you were amazing. And the Shaykh Abdul Nasir, I go to Shaykh Abdul Nasir, and mashallah, like the Hogan, but I had to go here. Inshallah. So you have to have a teacher that's always there, that's giving you advice, that uh, helps you improve over time. Because the the mulahadat or the little tips he used to give me, they helped me improve and made me uh, the person I am today. And you have to have a very good relationship with your teacher. You must ask him, you must tell, you must call him when he's sick, when he doesn't come to Duxi one day, you have to call him and go like, hey Ma'al, what happened today? Are you okay? And, uh, also, when, you, when there's a Asha that's hard on you, you have to call the Ma'al beforehand and tell Ma'al today, it's very hard on me. I have a lot of uh, work, I have a lot of homework today. So please, can you go easy on me? You have to have a good relationship with your Ma'al. That relationship will help you stay with your Ma'al longer and you'll become more successful, inshallah. And also another thing is friends. You have to have you have to have a uh, group of good friends that help, that motivate you to learn the Quran. You compete with, and they help you learn the Quran. Because if you're lonely in this journey, you're gonna give up really fast, and uh, you're gonna leave and deviate away from the path. So you also you have to stay away from the bad friends too. There might be bad friends who are always go like, bro, forget the Quran. Come on, let's go pa play basketball. Let's go play Fortnite. Man, I'm on tier 80. Come on now. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Last but not least, you must be sincere in everything you do. Like the Prophet said, you must be sincere when memorizing the Quran. You must increase your du'as. You must also ask your parents and your teachers to make du'a for you. And last but not least, you have to have utmost trust in Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Anyone who trusts Allah, that's all he needs basically. You have to have trust in Allah. And I'd like to end my words with that, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa